What's up guys, Clutch Bank 37 going to bring you the Element Onset Lacrosse Head Review. Um, before we dive into this, more background information on how they designed this head. I've been very fortunate enough to uh, know the people who designed this and be very close with them and kind of work with them in, in developing, um, or at least what to do with the head and make it better. I personally did not really help with any of the developing. I just kind of was testing it, stringing it up, and giving my opinions on what I would like and don't like. So before we get in the final head, I'm going to show you guys a couple of the, the predecessors before the final version as well as some stories. So for those of you who don't know, lacrosse heads take quite some time to produce no matter if you're East Coast Eyes, Warrior, Under Armour, it, it doesn't matter. It takes quite some time between 3D prints, uh, molds, plastics, testing, um, as well as you know getting it on the field and testing as opposed to just a backyard or, or messing around. So this head and this company have probably been working on these heads for about two to three years. Um, it started off as an idea and some SolidWorks, which is a computer program, I believe. And from there, it went into a handful of 3D printed models. Now the 3D printed models, I don't have one to show you, but a 3D printed model for lacrosse head, it's not meant for games or practicing or really even playing with. It's meant for uh, finding out the legalities, find out if the head's going to be legal for the, all the different leagues out there find out how it strings up, how it's going to sit on a shaft, and then overall just kind of getting a feel for what it could potentially be. Um, so from there, they use the first one to just get a feel for the head, and after it snapped, um, added a bit of changes to it here and there, got another one printed up, snapped it again, and then the third one was kind of the, the okay that says, okay, we have the final version, this is what we wanted, this is how it's going to string up, so it's going to sit on a shaft, this is ideally what we want to make the head into. So after 3D prints, they have to go through and find a mold maker, uh, find certain plastics, and get it all set up, um, as well as find a place that can actually do a mold for a lacrosse head. So from there, I think five months ago or so, or four months ago, is really when this company and this head idea came to life. So I have the first one here. This is the first one that they used the actual mold. It's not 3D printed and they used the plastic they thought they were going to stick with and that's what this one is here um, I'll get into the differences and what they change here in a minute but this is the very first plastic one they made or at least one of the first batches I think they made seven in the first batch and this is one of them um, after stringing it up it strung up very nicely I really enjoyed the pocket I got in it um, this is actually before Hero 2.0 came out so this is still original Hero Mesh just kinda give you guys a feel for what what time around the uh, the first plastic head came out so this is it. Uh, we got to play with these and experiment with them and they held up nice, they strung up great. The only problem is they did break. Um, the throat here, uh, it wasn't tight enough for shafts so no matter what you did you had to put some tape on there. And even with that, the throat itself, as you can see, there's not a lot of plastic to it. Uh, this is where they found uh, one of the biggest issues. And you can see here, I mean from the back, it's very, it's very short. Um, and that's where most of them broke. And then not only that, but up here in the front part or the top part of the scoop where there's that hole, um, so that's not a manufacturer problem, that's a plastic problem. Like I said, they went through and tested a whole bunch of different plastics. This was the first one they thought that they would use, and it just didn't hold up the way they wanted to. It was too easy to snap. Um, so from there, they went back to the drawing board, and from there they figured out what they needed to change, which was the throat, adding a bit more material in certain places, as well as closing this hole, and beefing this up a bit. So from there came the second version. This right here is the second version, as you can see. The throat of it is changed drastically. Um, this one here, it's a little longer than this one. They also beefed up the plastic, and they made it a bit longer, especially here in the back. You can see they really beefed it up. So what that did was we were able to test out the throat and see if it would fit onto a shaft. Um, they also added a bit more material here in the middle. So it fits on a shaft very nice and snug. You don't really have to worry about using tape with almost any shafts which is good and then from here they closed this hole here and added a bit more material test out a different plastic and after about two three weeks of playing with it um, in games and practices it really held up uh, we didn't have any problems we both play attack and midi so it wasn't like you know we weren't doing a whole lot of checks but for attack and midis it still had the same face shape they wanted the same string ability and stringing holes all they did was beef it up and try different plastic and it worked very well the only issue they found was with defenders taking big slap checks um, occasionally it would break up here at the top braces and then for face-offs it would break down here so like I said this was a better plastic than the first one but it wasn't quite what they were looking for 
Um, they want to design their first head to be very universal for attack, middies, and defense, as well as face-off guys. So they want to make it the best of both worlds, or best of all worlds, really, and design a head that was better. So like I said, we tried these out, and we don't take face-offs, really, so we just kind of did some dummy face-offs and found that. They held up for about 10 or 15 really aggressive ones, but then after that, they would snap. Um, so they decided to toss this plastic and try a whole new one. And after two or three weeks, they have come to the final version of the head, which is this one here. Um, they will come in black and white, or at least I know they'll definitely come in white. I don't know about black. I assume they'll probably offer some black ones. But getting the actual head review itself, this is the final version. This is the final plastic they use, and it is one hell of a head. Um, it's very beefy. I think it comes at 4.8 ounces, and as you can see, I mean, the head itself, it's, it's thin, but it's very beefy and thick, which is good. Um, and being 4.8 ounces with the plastic and materials they use is, is phenomenal. Uh, a head like this, you'd probably think it would be like 5.1 or 5.2 ounces, but 4.8 ounces, it's right up there with Optic and Command, which is a fantastic offering. The throat itself, they kept the same as the second mold, which is nice and beefy. Um, and then up here, they closed the hole and added a bit more material here. But with the plastic itself, you're still able to do face-offs and those really hard slap checks, and the head really won't warp or snap, which is which is pretty incredible. Um, I don't know the whole background on the plastic they use. All I know is it's uh, very similar or the same. They use in gun magazines, which those have to be sturdy. So the head itself is going to be sturdy. So that's the background information. Um, I'm going to dive into the review now and tell you guys my opinions and go through what's unique about this head. So starting at the scoop, they have six scoop holes. Um, the four ones that you typically use are angled kind of lower and down. Um, or at least the flatter portion is is pushed to or pointing to the inside as you can see here I swear the the second and fifth one are kind of angled outward um, That's just the design they did. I don't think many people use all six holes. So still allows for some customiz customizability Customizability, you know what I'm saying it allows for some custom ideas up here um, The holes themselves are fairly large. You can fit three hero strings very snugly uh, four hero strings doesn't work, but you can definitely have four to six sidewall strings, um, string king, gym relax, whatever you use. So, very good space. Starting up at the top here, I strung mine up. The first two are very, they're fairly wide. You can easily fit three hero strings through both of them. Um, typically, lacrosse manufacturers do the first three or four holes, but Element Lacrosse only did the first two because the way the head is shaped and the sidewalls are done, you really don't need any aggressive pull down for the first uh, two or three holes. So getting it from there, the holes themselves, I love the shape of these. It's, it's like a trapezoid. It's angled. It's almost like Warrior's Tilt Tech, just Element Lacrosse did it right. I mean, what that does is since they're angled like this, no matter where you put the knot, it's going to cinch and really go up into the, the top portion of the head, making it as tight as possible. And they're not going to move, whether you use uh, Hero Strings, Gym Relax, or String King, uh, which is one thing I really like. I really enjoy these sidewall holes. Going down the head, I think there's 17 of them, maybe 18. So pretty standard for all the cross heads. Um, the shape is awesome. I love the shape. It really, as you can see towards here, the bottom, it really locks those knots in, and they're not going to move a whole lot. Uh, getting to the throat itself, there are only two stringing holes for the throat. Um, you could, you know, if you do leathers, you just have to get creative, and I think that's a good idea and a bad idea. I kind of wanted them to have four stringing holes because I like to use leather pockets here and there. And even though you have to get creative with this, if you have someone who uses, you know, just a classic four down, they got to get creative and find a way, but there's, there's plenty of ways to do it. So it's not really a huge issue. Um, the throat holes are definitely big enough for leathers, and they're, they're very well placed across. Um, they're very straightforward with uh, the two top holes here. So no matter what you do, if you have leathers, it's just going to be a very straight pocket. Uh, string ability, it's very easy to string. The way that the head is shaped though, it's very aggressive um, from the drop all the way to the scoop. So like I said, the first two holes are the, really the only ones you have to worry about attaching the top string to. I found it a little difficult depending on what kind of pocket you're going for. If you attach the top string to the second hole, it adds kind of a very a triangular shape, very locked and very tight. Um, so when you string it up, I think you should definitely string up on the first hole. Maybe the second hole based off of what you're looking for in the pocket. but Definitely stick to the first hole. Uh, the scoop itself is very nice. It's actually very flat and fairly thin, which I like a lot for ground balls. It gives it a bit more flexibility. So when you're going down for a 50-50 ground ball and you push on the ground, the head's going to flex ever so slightly to where it's going to help the ball go in. 
Um, definitely like that idea there. I'm glad they didn't really make a beefy scoop. And then going down the sides, the sidewall holes like we covered is great. But the actual sidewall, the, the bottom rail itself, is extremely thick. And the way it's shaped, if you look on the inside here, um, it really protects those, those sidewall strings here on the inside. Uh, when you're looking at straight, the sidewall strings you can hardly see, which is really going to protect your strings from uh, passing, shooting, you know, catching the ball. They're not going to rub off. Um, they're not going to snap either, which is good. That's something that they really thought out and did a good job on. Um, throat itself, it has a very, um, it's hard to tell, but it has the Element Lacrosse logo here on the front, which is cool. Um, and then right here on the sides, it has the Element Lacrosse logo. And that's all they have on the head, which, you know, for someone who dyes heads, I think that's great. There's not a whole lot of, of material or holes or stuff going on the sides. And it's very subtle, you know, if you see this head, it doesn't look like anything else in the market, so you're going to be curious. But you really have to kind of look for the logos, which, nice little touch. So in the actual head shape itself, as you can see, the head is called the Element Onset. And the Onset um, is actually very wrong, or at least the name is wrong. Uh, I like the idea of the name. It, it kind of creates, you know, you have to look at videos and look on their website for why they named it that way. But typically when you hear Onset, you think of the Hawk, uh, pre, or the Hawk sequel, the normal Hawk, or the old school heads that are very flat across and kind of dip down uh, ever so slightly at the scoop. But this one has a very aggressive offset, which I absolutely love. Uh, nowadays, most heads have a slight offset, but this one, it's, you know, once you hit this point, it drops straight down. Um, and this is good for any pocket you string, um, high, mid, or low. I used kind of a, a mid pocket in this, a mid shifty pocket, which is what I really like, and this head really allowed me to do that first try. Um, what's unique about this head and what sets it apart from other heads besides all of that stuff is the offset itself, no matter where you put the pocket, once you have it on a shaft, I mean, you're really going to feel the ball in your pocket no matter what you do. Um, so you can see here, the pocket's naturally going to want to sit right around where the offset drop is. Um, but no matter what you do, even with the shaft, it's just, it has such a unique feel to it. I don't know how to explain it, but it's one of those things that, you know, when you're cradling two hand or winding up for a shot, it's really going to push that ball up here and allow for it to be furthest away from your hands with the offset, which is how you get a lot of speed and power on your shot. You know, the further the ball is away from you and the faster you swing your arms, the faster the ball's going to come out. So with this huge drop off right here, it allows the ball to sit far away from your hands, um, still being legal, but also give you a unique feel. Um, so overall, I think the Element Onset was, is a fantastic first head from this company. I can't wait to see what they do in the future with uh, defense and face-off heads, but uh, this thing is it's, it's sick. You know, it, it has a very unique shape to it, a very unique sidewall design. There's nothing up here which is good. It allows for a little bit of flexibility and pinching when you go to pass and shoot. Uh, but it's also very stiff and sturdy here for defenders to where you're going to lay checks and it's, it's not going to move. Um, down here, the only problem I can see is with face-off guys, um, since there is so much material here at the bottom part, you may have some difficulties getting a face-off and, and allowing a pinch and pop with this head. Um, but that's why you know they're coming out of the face-off head in the near future. Um, so that, that's the element onset for you guys. Let me know you guys' opinion. Um, also, one thing I forgot to touch on that's unique and not something we see to lacrosse heads anymore, or at least ever, is um, there, there are screw holes here on the throat. There's two of them, and they're not angled straight in, they're angled sideways. So if you have a head, or you have a shaft like this that's kind of extremely concave, the screws are going to sit right here on these points. And no matter what screws you use, or at least if you use a standard lacrosse screw that comes with most your string kits, uh, once you screw them in, they don't touch at all. So you don't have to worry about that. And what that does is, one, it allows for, for a lot of maximum attachment to it, and you're not going to get a whole lot of head wobble, if any at all, no matter what you do. And having two screw holes allows for it to really stay on the shaft no matter what. It's not going to loosen up over time. And I think that's something that's really unique. Um, so one last look, element onset lacrosse head. Um, six holes, the sidewall holes are extremely awesome. The way that they shape them on the inwards here is they're not exposed to the ball at all, which is great. Here on the outside, I mean, if you do knotted SIs like I did, they sit nice and flush, sit nice and tight. Face shape is, is really aggressive. The scoop is nice and pointed, but very flat, which is awesome. And overall, I think this is going to be, you know, once people actually use one and test one out, I think this is going to be one of the best releases of 2017, in my, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's unique enough to the lacrosse world that's something that's going to give you a unique feel. It's not something like anything on the market. 
but there's no gimmicks to it and there's nothing that's really you know crazy about the head so element on set there's a review for you guys let me know down below what you guys think in the next couple of weeks i will post more information um as well as our website do some shooting with this um as well as just some kind of testing videos to kind of give you guys a more feel of how this head is. So if you have an Instagram, go follow them. It's element underscore lacrosse. Um, that's about it. So let me know in the comments what you think. These are going to be priced at $84.99, so it's right below the 90 price point, which is, you know, pretty good. You save five bucks, that's five bucks towards a string kit or, or whatever. Um, they'll be coming in mostly white, probably some black ones. Um, yeah, that's the element on set. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know there's a lot of information. It's just being able to know and work closely with these the Element Lacrosse people. Uh, there's a lot to go over and a lot that I feel like I can share with you guys that you may not know about lacrosse companies and how this company started. So there it is. Element Onset. This thing is lethal. <laughs>